Hello everyone, and welcome back to yet another episode of Building Stuff, where as usual, I'm going to be showing you how to Build Stuff. Now before I begin, I am well aware that most of you have probably moved on from vanilla building, and are probably knee deep in settlement mods by now. Not to mention all of the new settlement items that came with the Wasteland Workshop and Far Harbour. But there are still a few vanilla builds that I would like to share with you all first, before I move on to mods and barns and all that good stuff. So do let me know if you're still interested in those, or if you'd like me to crack straight on with some mods. Anyway, next up is the Sniper's Nest. So, uh, let's build! Okay, so the sperm of our build is actually going to be this wooden shack foundation. And to get started, we're going to proceed to stack three of these on top of one another, using the old stairs trick. Be sure to pick up and release the foundations when you are done stacking them, as this makes sure that they actually sit on top of one another, rather than just hovering in midair. Next, we're going to make it so we can actually get to the top of our sniper's nest. The first set of stairs should snap in no problem at all, like so. The second set, however, does require a substantial amount of fucking about. Firstly, we're going to have to get rid of the middle shack foundation. No worries though, we can just snap it back in when we're done. Secondly, we're going to have to place down this small staircase leading off of the foundation. But as the game, for some reason, won't allow you to do this, we're going to need to aim our cursor down until the stairs turn green and can be placed. Right at the point when they turn green should be the exact position that they need to be in in order for this to work. But just for reference, it's about here. Once you have placed the small staircase, you're going to need to snap two small floors to the top of them leading away from the foundation. Once this is done, simply get rid of the floor here and then the game should let you snap the stairs onto the remaining floor. All we have to do now is snap another small floor onto the one coming off of the stairs, pop the wooden foundation back in, and finally snap our second staircase onto the foundation. And there you have it. Piece of piss, right? <coughs> now onto the final staircase that leads to the actual nest part of our nest. Luckily, this one is a little bit more straightforward. We've just got to snap these small floors onto this corner of the foundation in an L shape to get us around to the other side of the building. Once these are in place, we can then pop this small floor up here and snap a staircase to it. You do end up with this rather ghastly looking gap between the stairs and the floor, but this does eventually get filled in by the supports we will add in a bit later. Now we can access the upper level of the structure, we may as well pop the window in while we're up here. I recommend snapping small floors around the edge of the foundation first. This way the window won't try and snap to the edge, enabling you to place the window without too much fucking about. Once it's in, just line it up at the edges of the foundation, and that's that. Although I will say, if you're having trouble with lining up the window and it keeps on showing up as red, just try and place it from different sides of the building. I don't know why this works, but it certainly helps. All we have to do then is get rid of the floors, pop the walls in, and while we're up here we may as well pop the roof in as well. I recommend using this roof here for reasons I will show you in a moment. Once all of this is done, you should end up with something that looks like this. There's just one problem though. It looks stupid, but it's all good, we're getting there. Next we're going to put all the fences in before it gets a bit too crowded round here. There will be some gaps hanging about that you can't plug with fences, but this is entirely dependent on which direction the legs of your foundations are facing, like these ones here. But this really isn't the end of the world. If anything, leaving a few things unfinished here and there, like this half done decking at another part of my Starlight Drive-In build, can actually add to the aesthetic of any build like this rather than take away. So no worries. Now it's time to make the stairs not look like they're just floating in mid-air. To do this, we're going to be using these shack bridges. Simply line one up with the floor leading off of the stairs and then lower it down to the ground to sink it in and place it. Then just place another bridge on top of that one, making sure it is touching the underside of the floors to make it look like they're being held up by the bridges. It might take a bit of trial and error to get the elevation of the first shack bridge right, but once you do, the second one should squeeze in there nicely. Then simply rinse and repeat for the other platform and that's pretty much done. Now onto the supports for our roof. Now if you have the Far Harbour DLC installed, then you can use these beautiful little buggers for your supports. These can be found in the miscellaneous section of the barn tab. Alternatively however, seeing as this is a vanilla build, you can always use our old friend the spiked pole. For some reason, these just don't clip through roofs as well as they used to, so I'd recommend rug glitching them in there to avoid any unnecessary aneurysms. As far as the other side, we're going to be doing the exact same thing, except this time using a pylon instead. Because... pylons. PYLONS!
Our last support is actually going to be right the way down here underneath the stairs on the top floor. I actually managed to squeeze this one in without the aid of the rug glitch, but that may not be the case when you try this out, so just do whatever works best for you. Next we're going to have a snooze because I can't see a fucking thing. And when you're awake you should be greeted with this fucking gangrenous mess. Stupid! It's alright though, we're almost there. Next we're going to wire everything up. You may want to use conduits or wire it up completely differently to what I'm doing here, but I just love the look of these small wooden pylons. They kind of act as a sort of safety rail as well as adding a bit more texture to the structure. Once that's done, it's time for a bit of furniture, starting on the first floor with a desk, chair and a small chest of drawers. I put these here as I'd like to think that you need some sort of method of keeping track who is on duty in the nest, as they are wielding a 50 cal rifle over 30 settlers' soft squidgy heads. Not even the nuclear holocaust can escape the unyielding menace that is. Paperwork. Now for the furniture in the nest itself, starting off with a couple of boxes over here for ammo and whatnot, a nice large drawer unit, a swivel chair, and a little table for their tea. Next we're going to light the place up a bit. Now I know I say this in a lot of my builds, but we're not going to go too mad with the lighting. So I wouldn't go too bombastic with it. We're not going to go too mad with the lighting. <laughs> oh come on, let's be fair, it's a sniper tower. We don't want to broadcast our sniper's position to the enemy. We just need enough so we can make our way up there when it's dark. So we're just going to put a little bulb on each level A couple of candles, a lantern, and that should do you. And now for that all important part that ties any building together, junk fences. <laughs> Just hear me out. Starting off with these tyres, we're going to pop them on this rug, like so, and then slot them into this gap on the second floor, like so. This can be a bit fiddly sometimes, so if in doubt, just reposition the rug until you can squeeze it in there. Our second junk fence is going to be this corner piece here, and we're going to rug glitch this into the rear corner of the structure. I like to have it so that the uprights of the foundation are relieved from the face of the junk fence, but you could cover it completely if you want, it's entirely up to you. Our third and final junk fence we're going to rug glitch into here, just underneath the second set of stairs. I decided to do this because I found that the overuse of the shack bridges needed diversifying a bit, and I think that this junk fence breaks up the monotony just right. And there you have it, never underestimate the astounding beauty of tyres and rusty corrugated sheet metal. At this point we are almost done, all that's left now is the junk. Starting off with cups, more cups, lots of cups, cups, a teddy bear to guard our sniper's ammunition, an oil can for reasons, reasons. a dinner tray just in case he gets hungry, and of course a luxurious hunting rifle for our proud sniper, and finally a typewriter and dinner tray for our security officer on the lower level. And there you have it, your very own sniper's nest. And just to give you an idea of what the finished product will actually look like, here's the inside. And here's the outside. And 
And that just about wraps up this episode of Building Stuff. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it helps you out in some way or another. Don't forget to let me know in the comments whether you want me to finish off the vanilla builds first, or just crack on with some new items and or mods that are now in the game. Or don't you mind either way, just let me know. If you're new to the channel and like what you see, then please don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with my latest videos. And if you're a returning subscriber, then thank you for continuing to support my channel. Anyway, have a sexy afternoon. Until next time. <laughs>